Today is February 20th, 2020. Right now it is 8.24 a.m. Getting ready for the morning meeting at OKC Compassion House. You watch you all forget it. If you forget you put it in there. No, I won't. A month later, it'd be like, oh, what is that horrible thing? <laughs> Yeah, I can tell it yet. Two or three hundred dollars for it at least. Yeah. That's gonna be jack price. Yeah. Wait, if it does that. But I'm just saying I call, I call Sam and Mike. No, no, no. And then some of them, it depends. It depends on the model, the type, how used they are, on how much they junk them for. And then, like, the catalytic converter, if you go cut it off first, then it's going to be worth, like, $150. They were in Tulsa. I was like, I'm just going to go. That was back when I was doing it. How long ago was that? 2017. Okay, thing, everything changed. Uh, December of 2018, everything went to H-E-L-L. Yeah. Yeah, in the scrap world. December or about December of 2018, everything went to hell. Well, no, but this is you already had to have the titles in. Yeah. I'm talking about as far as like junk prices and catalytic prices and all that. Yeah, ain't nothing the same anymore. I mean, they're just starting to come back up now. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> when everything cool gets done. Well, if you're shut down on the computer. Oh, you aren't able to have that plug. Why can't no, you? This goes into the wall socket. You can't have that plugged in while this is charging? I'm going to have to unplug it. Just keep the cord off the yesterday during the fight. Okay. Did you get cord off yesterday during the fight? You can plug it up later. What? Did what that happened? stuff get messed up yesterday during the fight? Yeah. What happened? Oh. Laura and Dirk. Yeah, I know, but what, what got torn up though? 
That, this that is broke. Yeah, that's all broke. Oh, yeah. The electric. <laughs> Wow. All right, cool. I've, okay, there's electrical issues. It looks we're not getting any. Did you get electrical? Yeah, yeah. I got power now. Finally, okay, okay we're yeah, having trouble getting power. We're having trouble with power. I would have. I'm going to start charging receipts in the office if it's like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get that? I, I, went, I went to talk to my dad, and they were like, how much is this? Can I borrow this one from you? Can I borrow this one from you? And they're like, tell us about it. Um, no, not glad for the morning. That's the meaning, then I can get it from you. Yes. Because I got another one. Yes. Brandon drove before anybody else, because we had to go pick up our car at Midwest City, because he went to a competition that Francis Tuttle. That's the bottom. That, that van is awesome. Yeah. And we have no problem going down there or coming back. Good, okay. So they're already drinking it. It's the first time I see it. They're drinking Who's it. Who's drinking it? I thought we had a rule. Who's drinking in it? it? Who's drinking it? He's going to get you all. Why? Because he said no drinking in that van. He told Chrissy that. Wasn't nobody drinking. Well, I just know that's what he said. Huh? He said they're already drinking in that van. That's what he said. He don't want any open containers in it. Is that open? No, it no. ain't. Hers wasn't open either. Okay, tell him. Don't tell me. Hey, uh, Roy needs to go to work this morning. Who? Roy. At 8.30? Yeah, I think so. What are you going to have to do? I don't know. Laura says she's not coming. She's doing laundry. Okay. No, I mean, I'll have to go to like. So as I left, I went over there and gave him a couple of my little 
newsletters. I don't know if you guys are passing out newsletters right now that you probably forgot that already. It's not that hard to pass out newsletters, but maybe it's hard for you either. So I said, uh, you guys look so happy. What makes you so happy? And I said, well, because they said that because we know Jesus. I said, well, that's good. I said, uh, I want to leave the church and I have a ministry downtown. And where are you guys connected with? What kind of church do you go to? The older guy that was kind of in charge said, we go to Bridgeway. He said, I've been going to Bridgeway. I think that's what he said. The church is about 21 years. So I said, where is that? Because I had heard of it. And he said, I think it's over there. Uh, Broadway and uh, something other out north, up north, maybe 63rd or something. But anybody ever heard of Bridgeway? Anyway, there must be a church that believes in praying for more than two or three minutes at a time. So, I just left myself, I was in a hurry, and I just kept on on truck and said, well, keep up the good work. I admire somebody that prays a lot. I think one of the biggest problems in the United States of America and probably around the world is we either don't pray at all or pray so little. What do you guys think about that idea? I think the more we pray, the better we are. Yes. You say, well, that's boring. Well, then I guess we're not praying right. It's boring. Because the right kind of prayer is inspirational, it's uplifting, it brings peace, it brings joy, and it usually brings action, good action for you. Know, I thought maybe somebody was looking for a I did. I think you found the focus. So, uh, what I thought I might do is run down to the list of paper up here. George Bell. Anybody heard of George Bell lately? Yeah, he's watching the Okay. Now, that's your phone truck and needs to go get a battery. I'm in business. Okay, George. Thanks for the battery. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
about that. Yes. You're committing sin just because you don't shut up. You're saying things that hurt people. You're saying things that God hates. You're saying things that do harm instead of good. <coughs> So if you think you need to underscore that, mark it in red for black. I don't have that. I don't have a coffee. You don't need to I just made it. It's gone. I don't understand how come everybody has to come in the bottle. I don't understand how to explain it. It's a little bit. I don't know. 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 A fool finds pleasure in evil conduct, but a man of understanding delights in wisdom. I'll read this translation. Doing wrong is fun for a fool. It's not a fool. But uh, being wise brings pleasure to the sensible. <coughs> Wisdom brings pleasure to some people. Some of you don't get any pleasure out of wisdom. You don't read and read and read. You don't listen and listen and listen and say, wow, I just heard something really good. I learned something that's going to help me. And I'm so happy that I heard that. Doing wrong is fun for a fool. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, you can make a lot of fun. <laughs> you ever see anybody do wrong and it sounds like they had fun doing wrong? Yeah. Somebody ever come in here and start saying stuff and laughing like that? They know that they're being foolish. They know they're wrong. They know they're hurting the program. They know they're hurting the atmosphere. But they're laughing because it's fun. It's fun for them to do wrong. A couple of days ago, we had to call the police and get two people yanked out of the scholarship here. And I think both of them were having fun as they were doing wrong. They knew they were doing wrong. They knew they were saying wrong stuff. They knew they were hurting the meeting. And they enjoyed it. And they laughed. That's why I let about four big people grab a hold of one of them and take him out. Go on the front porch. And then later in the day, I just watched as the police came in, told the other guy to put his hand down. He didn't want to, but he finally did. I don't know what they ever did with him. Doing wrong is fun for a fool, but uh, living wise brings pleasure to the sensible. Anybody here want to admit that ever in your life you did wrong and you did wrong? <coughs> <coughs> okay, if I remember right now, that was 23, the next one is 24 and 25, it looks like I'm going to stick with right in the line there. The fears of the wicked will be fulfilled, the hopes of the godly will be granted. The fears of the wicked will be fulfilled. Have you ever been wicked and have you ever been afraid? The bad news might come your way because you're living an evil, sinful, wicked life. You need to be afraid. I'm glad you're afraid. I hope you're so afraid you'll quit. The fears of the wicked will be fulfilled. And I like this line also, the hopes of the godly will be granted. Have you ever had any good hopes? Yeah, yeah I got hope that everybody here would be sincere about the relationship. Uh, I didn't hear you say it again. I like that. 
That's it. I hope that everybody here be sincere about their relationship with God. Yeah. And continue to keep doing what's right inside of God. Okay. The hopes of the godly will be <coughs> I hope all of you people stay sober. I hope all of you people stay close to God. I hope everybody that's not close to God will get close to God. If I'm a godly person, maybe a whole bunch of that stuff's going to be fulfilled. Wouldn't that be great? I hope I can pay you utilities tomorrow. Not pants attention, boy, that will occur. I'm reading, <laughs> I'm reading what you're saying. Some man like heard me say, I hope your utilities can be paid. If I'm a real godly person, and there's a few other godly people around this in this group, and you're praying about this, maybe it will happen. It will happen. We'll get the money in to pay the utilities. You say, oh, you don't have to worry about that. Utilities are always going to be paid. Why are you worry about that? Well, they were shut off yesterday for a while, weren't they? Mm -hmm. At one house, will they turn back on? Oh, yeah. I don't know what time it can turn it back on, but it came back on. For a little while, but you turn it back on when it raised up some money. So somebody paid some rent and somebody put a little donation in the cable box. And then I think we've got a whole bunch of them do it at the same time tomorrow. Yeah. The hopes of the godly will be granted. Isn't that encouraging? If we are a godly crowd and we dream good stuff and we hope for good things, Good chance it may happen, right? right. That gives me encouragement. You guys ought to mark that verse. <coughs> oh, you can't mark it because his phone doesn't have a marker. <laughs> okay, the next verse that I wrote down when the storms of life come. The wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. Chrissy's breaking the rule the very first day. What are we going to do about that? I thought yesterday you said I could have it as long as I was super careful. That's cool. Yeah. I, I oh, swear. That's it, huh? That's what I thought you said. You could have it, but nobody else could. No, if you or that, everybody could. Well, not everybody. Just some because people. just the people at the front, so they can be extra careful and then not leave their trash in the back of the van. That doesn't sound no. like it's fair for everybody else. That sounds like me. Out. That sounds like what we've been talking about. That's anyway. no, what I thought you said. You thought I said that. Oh, okay. Well, we're sure not going to smoke in that new van. Of course van. not. Yeah, but, you know, partner. Can't smoke in the van. You we'll can't smoke on. in there. If you get in that van, you better put out your cigarettes. You hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, yeah. And the reason we don't like uh, Cokes in there is because, wow, I just took a look at that place yesterday in the carpet. It looks like they've got thousands and thousands of pounds of extra pepper on them. It's got really, really, really good. Huh? It's got really, really, really good cup holders in the front. And that, was the, that was the only place that I was going to let. Any coffee store is right there in the front. Sounds like you've got your rules all planned. No, not my rules. Your rules. You your thought rules. they were mine. But I thought that's what you had said. Oh, that's well, that's the anybody like that. else. <coughs> well, anyway, we're going to take care of that well, sucker one way or the other. Absolutely. And, uh, you say, how can we get in a vehicle without drinking a Coke? <laughs> you say, I never heard of that. And how can you get in a vehicle without smoking a cigarette? You know what I hear all the time? People say to Laura Dowdy, she's not here by the way, because she said she's going to stay away until she gets her brain straightened out a little bit. That's what she says. Somebody said to her, Laura, is it okay if I smoke or I'll put it down? She said, like, yeah, I'm all here. Of course it's not okay to smoke when Laura Dowdy's there. She might die. <coughs> she said, well, I'm going to smoke do it. I don't care if somebody else dies. <coughs> Am I exaggerating that sometimes smoke kills people? Mm -hmm. She goes back and forth to the hospital all the time because of COPD or OCPD or whatever you call it. 
Anyway, so we don't want any smoking in there because it hurts people and it makes the van all crummy and ugly. And uh, I don't know why we have to. I know somebody is sucking on coke all day long, and I don't quite understand that. There's, there's no value in a Coke, did you know that? There's no value, no food value in a Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Everything in that is harmful. Not as bad as alcohol or dope. So why do you keep sitting on it all day long? It's my coffee. Is it your coffee? Yeah. Is that what that is? Okay, how long does it take? How long? How many, how many hours do you have to sit on it? Not that long. Not that long. <laughs> <laughs> you have to sit on it now. Right, that would kind of be better. Okay. Hello. Hello? You say you're here? Who's here? You're at the store? I said, who's here? That's all what? I said. He said, somebody's here. I said, who's here? Would it be here? okay to come over here to the parking lot so I might be out of my meeting so long? I have to go get Roy. If you come to the parking lot, okay. I'll meet you right up. I'll come by right <coughs> the way. Is that okay? And I'll come to the vehicle. Or what? My vehicle sitting in the parking lot. Pull up inside it, okay? <coughs> That's be nice. Can I go get bro take one of the work and I'm gonna check on my job when I get there and see if they got my W two points. What did you say? Can I take Roy to work and check in and see if they got my W two points? No, I'm gonna take Roy to work. Yes, he has to go well, check on some work to listen for us all, I guess. No, he wants to go check on his W two form. Can you wait till that's in the meeting? Sure. He wanted to go check on his W-2 form, but I told him to wait until after the meeting. Oh, he got bored already? I guess so. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've got to leave in a minute and meet somebody in the parking lot. Pastor Bun, you can wait until after the meeting. I <laughs> have a chance on loaning people for the money if they're really desperate. Like if a poor lady says, DHS is out, they're going to take my kids if I don't pay my utility bill. They're sitting in the police car right now. And if I don't run up enough money to pay my utility bill, they're going to take them away. It'll probably take me a month or two or three to give them back. But once you take them, then they review your history. And uh, it's hard. For me to say no sometimes, I probably ought to say I should say no more often. But if they show me documentation, if they feel, feel like they're honest and they say they're going to pay me back in just three days, I think I'm fine. We can afford to make a little loan for a short time. No. Anyway, supposed to meet them out there and they're going to if she drives a hey, truck or some of that. Hmm? Is she driving a white truck? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it just pulled in? Okay. So we're at, uh, what verse are we at? 25. 25. Huh? 25? Yes. Okay, uh, you got your Bible there. You go ahead and read the following verses and discuss those verses that I couldn't be gone to go And we'll pick it up here in just a minute after I return, okay? Okay, we're going to read 225 and then 1028. So 1025 says, A full, or no, hold on. Sorry, I was thinking full. When the storm has swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous stand forever. Amen. Amen. So that's fairly self explanatory. When things get rough, Okay. 1025 was when the storm has swept by the wicked are gone but the righteous stand firm forever so that pretty much says when things get tough those of us who are right with God or are Christians we're going to still be here standing but the wicked are eventually going to be swept away and, and destroyed and then we go to 1028. The prospect of the righteous is joy, but the hopes of the wicked come to nothing. And and that one's saying that we have 
the future of joy. Like our life is going to bring us joy. Um, but what the wicked want for and the things that the wicked want and all that, they're really going to come to nothing. They're not going to have anything in the Their pleasure is short-lived. They're going to get they're going to get what they've got right now. And sometimes it's hard. Because you see people who look like they just blatantly don't care and they're not following the laws and they're doing whatever they want and they don't have any consequences. You know, it looks like they get all this stuff and it can be frustrating. But we have to stand firm and remember that what they get right now is all they're getting. Yeah. They don't have any future in it in their life. Like at some point in time, they're going to end up paying. And they're going to end up paying for eternity if they don't repent. And we have to look at that we have a future in eternity and that we have um, joy. And that should bring us joy. Just the fact that we have God and, and that, that we can pray and that our hopes and our future, like we have hopes and future, and that should bring us joy. So... Um, Okay. We're going to go to chapter 11. No, we're going to go to 31. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but a perverse tongue will be cut out. Um, Where are you at? I am at 1031. Okay. Okay, the mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but a perverse tongue will be cut out. Did somebody go cut um. somebody's tongue out? Yes. Uh-oh. You know, that's just... That noise. Those of us who are righteous and not of the world and stuff and that are, are doing what we're supposed to and reading and studying, you know, um, <coughs> those are the people you should listen to. Those are the people that have something to say. Um, but eventually, though, it says with the perverse tongue, those, those who are talking about things they shouldn't be talking about, and and that, that's what they think. Because what comes out of your mouth is what you think and what you focus on. Right. So if you've got all those thoughts in your head, that's going to be what comes out of your mouth. And, and eventually... It's saying your tongue will be cut out. I mean, it's just it's just going to be ended for you. I think it's just another one of those that says that's kind of your ending. It's like what you speak is what it becomes. Right. What, 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 is in your, what is in your head and what is in your heart is what you focus on. And what you focus on is what comes out of your mouth. Thank you. And all of that is who you become. Thank you. So if we think and we focus on... The good things, the positive things, the right things, then we begin to speak that. Because a long time ago, I started practicing like, and at the time, I was kind of into Buddhism a little bit, but it had a lot of like, it still had good principles. Like, I worked a lot on bringing in positive energy and putting out negative energy. And it actually worked really good, but if you think, it's still the same thing in Christianity. If I bring in and I think about the positive things, no. and that's what I speak, then that's what, then that's what I'm going to become, and oh. that's what could come out of my mouth. But if I focus on negativity and everything bad, then I'm going to speak that negativity, <coughs> and I'm going to push it into existence, and, and because... Our mouth holds the, our tongues hold the difference between life and death. Nope. You know, we, speak, we can either speak tongue. life or we can speak death. So your words are really important. You have to be careful what you say, you know, and everything. And it can be just, you know. Uh, you know, sometimes, well, most of the time, you can be, we can be our worst enemies. Yep. Being our neighbor, somebody across the street. What we think, what we speak, uh, we all realize what our thoughts can do. Confucius, he puts it like this. He said, it's better to be thought a fool of than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. <coughs> I think we all fall in that category sometimes, somewhere, you know. Just the thing about 
what who you hang with and what your atmosphere is uh, can develop into a plus sign or a negative sign. We are all accountable for what comes out of our mouth. And one day we're going to stand before the court and we're going to give an account. We have a choice to do right and we have a choice to do wrong. One thing that we need to realize, you know, nobody likes discipline. In, in groups like this, there's so much knowledge that comes out from so many people, but how many people are really retaining it and putting it to use? You know, we can help each other here more than some of these so-called professionals that have been to college and all that. We have right, lived a lot right. to give us true <coughs> intelligence. Yep. You know, we can go to school and get that crystal knowledge from books, and it's okay to a point, but it will break. It will not last. So what is it that we can't just stand still and, and open our heart to one another and share the wisdom that God has given us? Solomon said in all that he knew and all that he'd done and all that God revealed to him, he said, man is so perfect on earth, the only reason is to serve the Lord. And the other day I was thinking, Lord, he said, all this I've had and all this and I've, I've given away and I'll give you a little example. I was in L.A. and I was working uh, at a, uh, a day labor thing. And they took us to an auditorium, a big old auditorium. And we're upstairs and all that dust and all that junk. And I run across this, uh, what do you call it, a chandelier. And I look at it and I go, wow, I know it's pretty, you know. All the pedigree work, it was imported from Germany. And it came out of a big auditorium. And they were secured, you know what I mean. And I told him, I said, what do you want to do with it? He said, you want it? He said, keep it. If you want it. I said, okay. I said, yeah. He said, you send me a... So we keep on working, and it come a couple of boxes real heavy, and I took the dust out. I look inside, and there's all the crystal that goes to it. I'm looking at a $50,000 chandelier. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And so this art team came out of New York Magazine. They were advertising a certain... Uh, whiskey I believe it was or a bourbon oh, no. and if somebody could come up with a picture and have that bourbon bottle in the picture it would be going for a national prize right so I'm sitting there thinking I'm going wow man so by the ocean by the cliffs I'm thinking wow and I'm thinking of a white table with silk tablecloth with wine bottles or whatever <laughs> with a little cast of a jewel gin shining on the table and it's kind of like a surrealism and I'm thinking I need to get something, a metal bar that will go way up in the air and hang out over the, the cliff and I could hang that chandelier, chandelier with all the stuff and all the rainbow, all that good stuff coming off of it. I knew I had a good thing, but I met my wife. I took off the top of the chandelier to make some table candlestick holders and I got rid of something that was so valuable because my enemy, myself, didn't take root. I could have done so much with that and helped so many people. I sold it for $250. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I'm driving down the road and I'm going to watch this and then I'll end. I'm going down the road. I meet a, I meet two dudes and a girl and they're hitchhiking. They're going to a street port, Louisiana. And so I give them a ride, and me and the one, one dude, we get along real good, we're talking, and we, there was a lot of respect, there's just a lot of stuff in there, sometimes you'll meet somebody that way. And, and he pulled out the keys to a small mansion he had. It had some poles and all the you know, old southern stuff. And there was a, a, an acre and a half there, and there was a woman down to the boat dock and all that good stuff. And he said, Ernie, he said, I want you to have that. He said, all I owe is 5,000. I'm going to re-enlist in the Army. And I, I'd like for you to have that as a gift. And I was kind of reluctant because, wow, you know. So, but anyway, I took it. But as we got closer to Louisiana, the, the, his brother's fiance started getting more jealous and more jealous. And finally, I said, You know what? I respect you so much, man. He said, I told him, I said, I can't take it. I don't want to cause no trouble in the family. So I gave away a little mansion. But then I compared the two stories one was giving. And the other was get. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got what I got, 250. But I gave something I believe and I hope that was more lasting than that. So we have a choice. We run out of knowledge. How do we know this? Have you ever run into a situation where I can't do it no more? I don't want to hear it no more. We just run out of understanding. So you know what you do, you tell. 
the soul of God, and the actual wisdom and understanding. And that's what we've got to do here. We've got to keep going through the throne of grace, asking God to reveal to us the things that we need to carry on what we've got to do, always for His glory, and we'll find out the door will be open to us. It will right before our eyes, but we never knew it until we sought Him and we got instructions from the Maker. Okay. 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 Verse 32, uh, chapter 10. The lips of their righteous now, what is they? Is that the one I just read? Okay. But the mouth of the wicked, only what is perverse. Did I read that one? Yeah. Yeah. Just now. We're on chapter 11. I'm sorry. Verse 3. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. That's basically saying that the upright we have we have our honesty, we have who we are, and that that is gonna be what saves us and makes us who we are, and that's but but the the um, unfaithful, the sense of duplicity, a lot of times they have multiple sides too. Or they're multiple sides like they say they're this and they sound real good up front, but, but they're no re- right, but they're really this. You know, they're projecting one thing, but they're I've got your paper pass along, I'm sorry. Cool. They're they're something else and uh, <coughs> when when their true side is revealed, that's gonna be what destroys them. Because they're not really who they're showing that they are. I'll let yeah. that go yeah, put on front. That was eleven verse three. Eleven three. Honestly, <laughs> people, dishonesty destroys treacherous people. You think deceit is a bad thing? Yes. You want to turn in this room is always honest. You're not trying to deceive something. You're not trying to smoke us. You're not telling big fat lies. I'll be back here. That was 11.3. Yes. What does 11.4 say? Jesus, do not talk to the day of wrath. Righteousness delivers from death. Righteous, right living. This is right living saves you from death. You can have millions of dollars to still go to the judgment and end up in a bad way. Mm-hmm. You could. Okay. Right living is a big deal because when you talk in the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament talks about judgment day. I'm not talking when you I'm talking about when you go to the county courthouse down there, is it? How many of you have been to judgment at the county courthouse right there? So, not talking about that, it's talking about the judgment that will determine where you spend eternity. Right living will save you. Money will save you. Okay, so that was uh, 11 4, now 11 7. Somebody read 11 7. When the wicked die, their, ho- their hopes hope to die with them. We rely on their own feeble strength. Oh, when the wicked die, their hopes die with them. When they rely on their own feeble strength. You know why some of you can't quit hope after doing it for 25 years? So you, you're, you're relying on your own strength, and your strength ain't strong enough to fight the dose, right? Right. You know why some of you can't get rid of lying after you've lied for 25 years? Because you're too weak to overcome that. Somebody help that guy find Proverbs over there. He said, you're looking for Proverbs? Yeah, I got it. You got it? Uh, when the wicked die, their hopes die with them. They rely on their own feeble efforts. I think of uh, Psalms 121, verse 2 pretty often. I've got a little sign in my little office at home that says, My help comes from the Lord who made heaven 
and earth. That's an amazing verse to me. Where does my help come from? When I feel weak? When I feel like I'm just not strong enough to solve this problem in front of us? Then I like to say, my help comes from where? Lord, Lord. Oh, God's going to help me? And how strong is he? What has he done that's impressive? He made the heaven and earth. Wow. Okay. That's his word. So uh, that sounds like a good deal. If we can be close enough to God that we feel like God will help us. And we don't have to just rely on our own weak, feeble strength. Man should survive off of every word of living God, not just bread and water alone. Say that again. He said, "Not survive off of bread and water alone, but off of every word of living God." Yes, even when you right. drop a man out of heaven, they still didn't believe. And they were for forty years. Okay, so that was the eleven seven, I think. And now I wonder what eleven twelve says. It is foolish to belittle one's neighbor. A sensible person keeps quiet. I don't tell them I am. Have you ever been, there may probably another word that might be better than this one, have you ever been belittled by somebody? Mm -hmm. Somebody said something naughty about you? Somebody said you're the blank, blank, blankety blank. <laughs> it's foolish to belittle your neighbor. A sensible person will just keep their mouth shut. If you can't say that good, don't say that good at all. Right. Well, that's that's Proverbs talk. chapter 12. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Sometimes we, are, have, we have to be judges, and we have to determine strengths and weaknesses of people. We have to determine the good and the bad. We don't have to determine the bad. And so, but basically, generally speaking, we don't want to belittle a person just because we want to. You ever had fun when you criticize somebody? You ever enjoy it? Mm. What happens around here a lot? People tell me you come up with this solution yourself. Oh, the reason he's talking bad about somebody else is because he wants to get the attention off himself. Right, right. See, this is a sober living place. You're not supposed to do no dope, and you're not supposed to do no alcohol. Yes. And so if you're guilty because you're doing dope or alcohol or doing something else wrong, <coughs> you don't want to think about that, so you report that somebody else is doing so and so and so and so and so. Yeah. So and, and you enjoy that, and that's not good. Now, if you're a serious judge and you're trying to really figure out something, trying to figure out if somebody should go to the prison for the next uh, 20 years, then you need to figure out what's right and wrong. And if that person is a killer and needs to be locked up, then uh, you need to do something about it, right? But basically, don't do it. Okay, what was that? Was that verse 14? 12. 12. 12. Okay, so after 12 comes 13 and 14. Okay. So we need to do one thing. First of all, just keep quiet. Okay. Just keep quiet. 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 A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep the confidence. Somebody explain that a little better. Keep a, a confident. A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. A confidence of everything. Some of you have like to blab it. If you find out something bad about somebody, well, you can't wait for yourself to look. You know? That's me. 
Sometimes people give advice. I say this to my little group quite often. They say, so, I heard this about so and so. I say, 
Who said that? Yeah, yeah. You guys take one so. But don't take that very seriously. I'm a good person to listen to. Did you know that there's a few people in on this campus? Their advice is not part of the work of Bud Nichols. I do. Don't listen to them. It's real risky if you take that seriously. I'm thinking about one guy. He's always saying something about his stuff. Everybody, everybody in my house is going to say, really? What about so and so? Oh, well, no, I don't think he is. And then I bring up the what about so and so? Well, you just got through saying everybody was. So I don't listen to him very much. I want accuracy. Pardon me for being crass, but, you know, like... Don't be crass. I can't handle crass, okay? <laughs> <laughs> if somebody passes gas and looks at the other guy and says, I'm stuck, I'm trying to kill him, mate. I mean, that is kind of like, you know, the... I'm truthfulness of people when they hear who do this drugs and will look out and say to the other part, we need to get rid of that guy because he's doing drugs. Oh, yeah, well, that's what we just said a minute ago. Yeah, I mean, you know, that kind of advice I heard. You know, I have a little thing that I've sometimes say to people. Serious source. You know what I mean? You know, you know, know I mean? That's true. That's true. And some sources are not so good. Right? Some people, before they open their mouth, they think very carefully because they want to make an accurate statement. The age brain is more open. Uh, Mr. Uh, oh my God. Carrie, the man Carrie, not the lady. <laughs> Well, what's the difference? There's a difference. Two different people. No, I understand. And if you can't tell the difference, then I don't want to follow your advice. Yes, you may have been. Consider the source. Gary told me yesterday, and then I told him the other day, so I said, how can you get me out of that meeting? Oh, my goodness. Are you serious? You can't get that. The Bible says they're not judged. It's not picked up. He's all wrong. Jesus talked about judgment. Uh, he said, don't judge if you're going to be judged. If you're going to be judged, you're going to be judged by high standards yourself. What he said was, he said, don't you try to, he said, pass him on, don't try to judge Philip. Did you see a speck of dirt in his eye? you got a big log in your own. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Is that what he said? Jesus said, first, he said, see the log in your own eye. Before and you then maybe you can see clearly to get that little speck out of the whole lot. So Jesus was really saying, hmm? I just I'm not saying what to say. Some guy I don't know. Because a lot of people must understand that. You know, he didn't say just not very yeah. He said, if you're going to judge, make sure your vision is good. Make sure your wisdom is good. Make sure you judge accurately. Yes. If you're not a good judge, don't judge people. Right. You got a bunch of judge in your eyes and you can't see properly what another person is like, then forget judgment. Yep. And, uh, wrong, and uh, I would trust my judgment better than his when it comes to making decisions, and I might mention this one more time, it's really bad, I don't know where it put it the other day, it's really bad when somebody wants to say stuff in a meeting like this, and you're about 99% sure they're just being a great big old fat hypocrite. Amen. 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 Carrie knows the Bible. Yeah. Right. So all you need to do is know the Bible. No. 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 So no. You've got to practice it. You've got to live by it. Bible. He acts like he understands the Bible, but he doesn't always understand it very well, and he for sure don't live it. No. He just knows the Word. And I don't want somebody in this meeting, when we're trying to have an honest, Holy Spirit conversation, saying bad stuff, harmful stuff, yes. untruthful stuff, hypocritical stuff, Right. That really taints the atmosphere. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's why I just sat here in my chair 
and let two or three or four or five or six people, however it was, pull him out of here and throw him on the front porch. <laughs> because he needed to go. He did oh, need to go. He did. Yeah. And then look, and then look what he did the next day. He came back the next day and opened up the door. Opened up the door. I called you the B word. Yeah. Yes, he's else? also a sandpaper personality. Anybody else need to be thrown out today? Or somebody tell me who else needs to be thrown out right now because they're just. <laughs> 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 we're okay right now. <laughs> let me let me just say, without wise mm -hmm. leadership, mm -hmm. the nation fails. There is safety in having many advisors. If you're president of the United States, you need some help making decisions. Mm -hmm. <coughs> if for some reason we give you some authority, not a lot, but some authority, to kind of be a leader in one of the houses that we have, you better not just try to make all the decisions by your own little self. You better be big enough to discuss with somebody else, what shall we do about so-and-so? What shall we do about this? Let's talk about it. Let's think about it. There's usually about 25 choices you have. You want to make the best choice that will do the most good, right? Right. right. You just don't want to jump from your emotions, jump from anger. You know what I think? When you're angry, you are a very poor advisor. Yes. When you get angry, you lose a lot of your brain cells. Amen. You lose a lot of your good sense. Yes. And if you want to give me some advice, and I say that you're as angry as anything, I usually say, well, wait a minute, I'm going to, you know, calm down your anger where you can think clearly. Because you're probably going to say some wrong stuff right. about what ought to be done. So we need to, we need to have good advisors. There's a guy that has a big RV sitting back here in the parking lot. I can't remember his name. Go ahead and bring it out. Some of us think, some of us think that he ought to zip it up, lock the door. Nobody lives in it. No cords ought to be running from there to here. Then I've talked to two or three or four people about it. Don't be quiet about her. And guess what? <coughs> they wanted to hang him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All of my advisors <laughs> think it would be good if he would zip it up and move into one of the houses okay. and take that big guy with his name Brandy and say that's okay. Right. So we're kind of planning on that. Right. But he's going to have surgery in about two months. Yeah. Pretty critical surgery. Yes. Yeah. Open heart surgery. <coughs> We're going to take a big old knife and just cut him right down here. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I said you're welcome. That's going to hurt. But these doctors know what they're doing. They 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 know what so sometime between now and when he goes to the hospital, that thing will be zipped up. It's okay to leave it parked here if nobody's living in it. Right. Is that girl so smart that you don't need to stay down on the bottom step? She's not very smart. <laughs> you know, so sad about her, you know what I mean? I watched yep. her as a little girl, she's growing up, and I don't think she's ever had a job, I don't think she wants a job. Uh -huh. Mama told me the other day she's taking her to the hospital because she's sleeping outside and she got sick. Mm -hmm. Little girl. She had to get a grandma that way too. Mm -hmm. I said in court one night, I remember the judge and said, I know Aunt Oma Raven and I know she'll be a good mama. That's her grandma. Yep. The mom's no good. She got one dope enough thing. So I helped influence the judge to say, okay, Anna. That's your girl to take care of. Now her mom is walking the right, the right path. Good. That's good. As soon as she found out that she had cirrhosis of the liver, you know what she did? Oh, she oh, the right right there. There. Amen. Right now. Amen. And it was real quick, very quick, quicker than usual. Oh, they said, we got a liver transplant for you. 
Amen. And they took out her liver and put in a new one. And man, she comes around now and she's got a bright smile on her face and she acts good and she lives in a house and she drives a car and she's altogether better because she's <coughs> dope after being on dope about all of her life and childhood even. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm sorry about that little girl that had to leave. She has absolutely no interest in studying God's word, I guess. Sad story, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, see, some of these words of wisdom, they just stick on me and I can't get off of them. 11.14, without wise leadership, a nation fails. There's safety in having many advisors. So don't think you're a big shot you know everything. <coughs> Don't think it's you have the answers and nobody else does. Well, I mean, it's a good I really think Mr. Trump's a pretty smart guy. I know. <laughs> Sometimes I see the tragedy in my state and I say, I think I can do about as good as he does. Wow, he handles this and he handles that. And he's doing this and he's doing that. He's over my head. But even if he is quite capable in getting a lot of things done and helping a <coughs> taking care of China and doing a whole bunch of stuff and surviving that impeachment deal, uh, he still needs some good advisors around him. Did you know that? Yes. And all the rest of you do too. You don't have all the answers all by yourself. No? Right. You shut your mouth and open your ears and listen to somebody else's opinion before Amen. you make a final decision, okay? Mr. Darrell. Okay, I'd like to make a statement Don't look at me. in reference to that. Uh, I so good. Our good <laughs> president, I told you I was <coughs> doing like research on huh? George Washington. Mm -hmm. And when George Washington <laughs> became president, they wanted to make him king. Okay. They wanted to make him king of everything. Uh, and king, or George said, no, kings in America. Yeah. Okay, and when he was leaving his office for the last time John Adams was taking over. He said, there are two things that I really want you to know that I'm, I'm thinking about when I leave this office. One, that there was a turnover of power without military stuff. And two, I don't want to make any more of these decisions. I want to go home. And so, <laughs> the decisions he made yes. We're very critical do it. to the nation. Okay. Now we have <coughs> decisions like that here at this at this organization, and yep. this organization yep. is yep. ran like that. Right. Where decisions must be considered. Oh. Okay. And I think you told me that you held George Washington in high esteem. Yes, I do. And I think you told me that I remind you of George Washington yes. and you also hold me in high esteem. Yes. Yes. yes, sir. Our beloved pastor. You don't have nearly the thrilly box that he had. Ernie has a comment. Yeah, I want to ask him that. You know what the Washington Tower is? Oh, wait a minute. You're not just skipping over that topic. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay, keep going. In Latin, it has. Uh, in yeah. all, in all, I'll just put up. Uh, it, it comes down to in God, yeah, in God we trust in land, in the very cold top of the Washington Tower. So George Washington went way beyond himself. Uh, it wasn't the Tower of Babel, it was the Tower of Knowledge, and God was the head of it. He became a king and the Lord of God. Amen. Wouldn't it be great if all the political leaders were good Christians when that way all Okay, let's go to 17. Anybody want to read 17 for me? Because I can't read it very well. Uh, 11, 17. The man who is kind benefits himself, but a cruel man hurts himself. My translation says, Your kindness will reward you. <coughs> your cruelty will destroy you. Let me mm -hmm. be real honest. Are you always kind, or are you sometimes cruel? Sometimes. When you open your big fat mouth. Mm. We're Sometimes. Trying to be cool. We're trying to be right, but we don't always get it. That means you're failing. Every time you start your statement with a cry, <laughs> and like I said, we do fail. Can somebody say that you're kind most of the time, 
Anybody want to admit that sometimes, by the sound of your voice and the look on your face, you speak with cruel D? Go. Yeah, occasionally. <laughs> no, I'm kind of some, and okay. sometimes I'm. I'm where are we? Why are you cruel? That's what I'm saying. Where are you going to get a straight now? Huh? Where are you going to get a straight now? Probably not this side of heaven. Not this side of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's a process and something. I recognize it and I admit it. And that's the big thing. I admit it. And I need to correct it. Thank you, Philip. That sometimes you're cruel instead of kind. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. George, you're never cruel, are you? I try not to be. Try there. Is that try word again? Uh, <laughs> practice, practice, practice. Treating people the way I want to treat them. Doesn't always work. Some pe- sometimes people's will pleasure. reward you. Do you hear what that says? Yes. Every time you're kind, God is going to, in some way, reward you because kindness is so awesome. And he wants you to live right. Now, the other part is, but your cruelty, your cruelty, I don't know how cruel you have to be and how often you have to be cruel, but your cruelty at some point will destroy you. Stop being cruel. Be kind. Is that too hard to live up to? Simple, you reap what you sow. Yeah. 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 Sometimes, sometimes you're cr- you got to be cruel, which is being kind to other people, though. You know, like for instance, when Ed, when Carrie was. Here, you know, yank out onto the front air or whatever. I mean, that's, you know, might say that's kind of cruel to him, but he kind of made his bed, you know, he didn't get a lie in it, you know, and that was kind to everybody else by getting. Let me say something back to though. He claimed he was hurt. I had two, three, or four people that were right in the middle of that, and they said he didn't get hurt. He didn't get hurt. We didn't hurt him. We tried to be as kind as we could be. We tried to be as careful as we be, could be. It wasn't our desire to hurt him. Right. I, and I, I think we find out even after he calls IMSA and after he calls Channel 4, we see him standing outside talking around. They can probably see it right away. The boy's not hurt. Yeah. It's a big fake. Yeah. So nobody really hurt him. Now, I might have hurt his feelings. I made him made him mad. But my... Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't crank him in the nose, but I didn't call him a blank, 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 and blank, like he told me. So you might say there was a little bit of cruelty in there, but that's not really a good No, that's, not, that's really not cruel. Yeah, you're right. You're Thank right. you very much. I wasn't cruel. Thank you very much. Okay, well, you know, during that incident, what really, really fascinated me was, uh, while they were, you know, taking him away in the ambulance and all that chaos was going on, he was saying this statement, I got him right where I want him. Yeah, that's what you're saying. I don't understand that. I mean, you as you're being hauled away in an ambulance, he's telling me people that I got him right where I want him. Talking about me? Yeah, uh, that's what. Well, that's what I thought. I, I, I and I was what, sitting there going, I know what he meant by that, but I that, don't know what yeah. he meant. By okay, he don't know what he, he meant. Said he said he said he said he said he well, said I think what he meant by it is that he he has uh, possibly you know like a legal issue there. Yeah, you know. Possibly is the key word in that. Though. Oh, yeah, you know. That's why he called Channel Four. Yeah, yeah, like he could get. Oh know. yeah, they got the channel. They got the TV out here. You got the cops out here. Yeah. I know when they call the cops right. out here. He's gonna get past the bottom. That's, that's cops. what he meant. He's by gonna close down that ministry. Oh, that's geez. what I said. How many people have you said that part four? I mean, that's right. Yeah, that's what I said. I've heard that a lot of different people. You know. Over the few years, you know, as you're being hauled away, damn, you're going, I got you right where I want you, man. I don't understand that. Got that. Got that. Yeah, I don't understand that. Mr. Jans has a wise comment to make right now. He said that he was going to sue you for $22 million. He <laughs> <laughs> don't got that much money. I thought you don't know, need he, he, that the organization did not have two million dollars. Even if they had a lawsuit, the, that's ridiculous. You, you remember the big bug at Roy? 
Remember, he used to always pull that. Okay. Your kindness and reward out. you, your cruelty on the everybody. Today, be kind to everybody. It's time to be kind. Try not to be cruel to somebody. If you got to get them out of the room, should without hurting them. And we got him out without hurting him. That's right. And anyway, uh, verse, uh, the next thing we have to look at is that was number 17. Yes. Now, number 19. What happened, 18? I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> find life, evil people find death. Evil people get you rich for the money. Godly people find life, evil people find death. So you want to you want to be evil? No. But as think you can all avoid being an evil person today. Mm -hmm. Every time you think of evil, when you think of death, godly people find life. It's a choice between life and death. You want life? Be a godly person. Be a holy person. Be like God wants you to be. Don't be just like you feel like being. Be how God wants you to be. That was number 19. And number 20 says, The Lord detests people with crooked hearts. Mm -hmm. But he delights in those with integrity. The Lord detests people with crooked hearts. But he delights in those with integrity. Delights. There's a phrase that some people use, they call it uh, some kind of love. What's that word they use? Love. No. Oh, yeah, that is my mind. Uh, unconditional love. Brotherly love. Uh, yeah. Brotherly love. Agape. Unconditional love. Agape. Which Agape. Means that God Agape. Loves everybody exactly <coughs> the same way. Unconditional love. That's, that's a dangerous statement because it might say, it don't matter how I live. God still loves me. God's always going to love me. If I'm rebellious, if I'm evil, if I'm awful, it's okay. He still loves me. He's he loves always him. the same. He can love someone and not like him. That's very true. true. That's very true. true. What's the word detest me? Uh, no, no, dislike, hate. Uh, yeah. The Lord <sighs> detests people with crooked hearts. If you got a crooked heart, if you have an evil part, if you look at your actions and decide that you're a pretty evil person, God does not love you the same way as he loves that person that's trying diligently day after day, hour after hour, moment after moment, to do right, to do right, to do right. I suppose you could compare that with a good parent and their child. You can have a real naughty child that be detested of behavior. You have to make major decisions about them that are pretty ugly. I had a, had a friend one time, he was a pastor, him and his wife, and had a boy that was on dope. And he was so bad, he was bad on the rest of the family. The oh my God. Eventually, they said he had to leave home. And I think they got real tough. That's not really like too tough or not, but they might have. But they said, uh, <laughs> You can come back home when you quit dope. I lived here in Oklahoma at the time. And then they got a phone call one time that said, uh, My son's in the hospital in Tulsa. He's out there. So I'm going to ask him which way the main was. Oh, on that way. <laughs> and drive all the way to Tulsa. And they were with him when he died. They loved him in many ways. But they didn't want him to be a part of the family because he turned that family apart. He was a bad influence on the younger kids in the family. And they got tough. You might say they detested his behavior. In a sense, they detested him the way he lived. 
back to what you were talking about with sin what was not sin uh, everything that we do generally can be considered a sin and there is a big difference in my mind anyway between going out and killing your fellow neighbor and stealing a pack of gum at Walmart I'm not saying either one is right oh, okay. because they're not but I feel like God has a whole lot of time less time forgiving the person that's asking for forgiveness for stealing the gum as he does for somebody who has killed somebody. Okay. Verse 23. The godly can look forward to a reward while the wicked can <coughs> expect judgment. The godly can look forward someday to an eternal reward. Wow.
But here's what he said about it one time. And he said it with some grief in his heart. He said, boy, if there's anything wrong, she's going to claim it. Right. Mm-hmm. He said that about his own daughter. Well. She's always looking at life. Negative. Who's talking about that? Me. I just said negative. I can't hear you, but anyway. She's always, he said about his own daughter that he loves very much. She's always looking for something to complain about. Right. Right. She's always looking for something to criticize. She's always trying to find something wrong with somebody. I sometimes watch people watch a ball game. And they're always complaining about uh, that player. Well, he shouldn't have done that. He should have guarded it. Yeah, we're watching people that are experts. They're excellent. They're awesome. Sure, sometimes they mess up. But why do you want to jump on them and criticize them about they let that guy shoot that shot and make three points? The you know, glass so is always half empty to them. Because okay. it makes them feel better, too. Being positive is a good thing. Person. And if you're always looking for what's wrong with the person, that's not a good way to live. No. If you love to see something wrong in a person, and you love to exaggerate it, and you love to talk about it, and the longer you talk, and the longer you yap, the worse and worse they get, until you're all heated up about how bad they are. Mm-hmm. There's nothing good about that. No. And a lot of times I have to stop somebody and say, Whoop, that's enough, that's enough, I got the point, you know, did some wrong stuff, but don't keep going, don't keep exaggerating it. There's a lady standing back there in the corner, does anybody know that lady? Yeah. yeah Amanda Shilin. Hi guys. Hi Amanda. I thought she went to Arizona and was never going to come back to Oklahoma, is that true? Um, I never said I wasn't coming back, oh. but yes, I uh, I came back to visit family for a couple weeks. Okay. Steve's still in Phoenix uh, Is working. That you Steve? Yeah. No, Steve. Steve's at home working. He had to stay home. But uh, anyway, so I just decided that uh, today was a good day to come and get a little bit of the word good. and visit some some family and friends. And well, thanks for coming by. You remember us, huh? Oh, yeah. You remember the good old days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys are always, always in our prayers. Well, that's good. Cool. Uh, Thank you. We, uh, we love you guys, and I'm glad that I got to come and see you in well, person. Thanks for coming. Nice by. to meet you. I'm One thing I remember about her and Steve is uh, when they were here and started getting it together real good and the spiritual side you decided you needed to get married at a mm-hmm. christian wedding yes right? and just before was it a wicca priest or something right that right that? yep well, that's what i remember yep and you know that we just well it wasn't just but in june we celebrated 15 years of marriage oh, Lord. Yeah. Oh. and uh we can't live without each other nope. <laughs> we depend you found upon that one another you found that out huh? You said with or without? without. Yes. We can't live without one another. Oh, the, I've been gone for a week and a half, and it's driving us crazy. I'm ready to go home. And <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good to see you, and it's good to hear a positive report. And uh, this guy, Steve, struggled with some dope for quite a while, and years gone by, but he must have complete victory over that, right? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Absolutely. Did you have a son named Ahmad or something? Oh, <laughs> I pray for I pray for Ahmad as well. Okay. I don't miss him, but I pray for him. I would go over there and slap him. Hmm? He said he'd go slap him. Yes. And those of us are getting better and better as the days go by. Awesome. A few of us are standing by. <laughs> My best small group is going backwards, but we're still trying to help people move forward. And uh, we had about, I don't know, how many we had in our program when you were here? How many do you think we had? Oh, there were at least 70 of us. Really? Yeah. Well, we still got about that number. Yeah. Our houses are always full. Yep. We don't have to go out and recruit people and party them to bring them in. They call them on the floor and knock on the door. And yesterday, I think it was, we had four people on one wow. day because they were all needy. They didn't help for you. They didn't help for you. You guys took me in when I was in need. 
You were in need too. I was in need. And I'll tell you what, you guys, this place is a blessing for anybody who comes in here. And all you have to do is follow the rules, read your Bible, believe in Jesus, and life will get better. Right. You know, it's a struggle. I know it's a struggle. I want to be in a place where we do good. Yes. Or you want to be in a place where you do evil. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing to watch people change from evil to good. Anybody else have a comment before we close down here in about three minutes? Either on some of the verses they've looked at or some of the most beautiful <coughs> conversations they've made there. The okay, there is also in this, uh, Proverbs, there is a verse that I've never been able to figure out. It says, if you sit in judgment on someone, you must have the power to expiate them. I don't know what that means. Set them free. The part to do what to Expiate. Set them free. Yeah, Ex no, yeah. Set them free. So if you can't do that, you know. Uh, yeah, some people like to judge somebody and just hurt them. Yeah. I think what you're saying, if you want to judge somebody, your goal is to help them. Yeah, exactly. With your judgment. So you have to examine your heart. Do you like to judge somebody because you're mean and hateful and cruel and you yeah. hate their yeah. judge? So you're yeah. Yeah. Or do you judge people in order to help them? Yeah. There's some verses in the Proverbs that I'm going to rise here. I've got to go. Okay. That's about it. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. 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 But the punishment is not the goal. But they so focus on the punishment, they forget the goal. Yeah, the goal is to help you, not to hurt you. Yeah. But it is going to be a punishment if you don't. But they see it once they hear about like, punishment, it's like to be a kid. Like, oh, I'm going to get a whooping if I do that. So they focus on what you're supposed to do when it's right. They keep focusing on what's going to happen if they do wrong. Okay, the lady back here has her hand up to the next lady. That's also. Can I say a Bible verse? It's the verse of the day on my phone. Okay. And that's the King James Version. Romans 8, 39. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we stay close to God, keep the devil to the curb, we're yeah. safe. We might have to fight. Yeah. It is a battle. But with God's help, we can stay true to God, stay close to His love. Um, to me, so much of this has to do with like, um, the words we speak, the power of our tongue, that we have the power of life and death. Yes. You know, that um, speaking speaking good things, speaking positive things, and, uh, and also like what's in our mind and what's in our hearts. If, if we bring in positivity and that's what we focus on, that's going to be more of what we represent and that's going to be more of what we send out and show others. So be careful, be careful with our words and remember like what's, no what, what is, what we think of and, and what we think of and what's in our mind is going to be what we speak and what we become. Right. So that's like it's true. a really big thing to try to focus on is that our words are so important that we do try to be careful. Search me, oh God, know my heart because what comes out of my mouth is what's in my heart, right? You got hate and anger and hostility in your heart. Oh, no, we got your lips, right? right? So ask God to correct your heart, give you a clean heart, mm -hmm. a pure heart. Then your mouth will be clean. Anybody here ever been guilty of having a potty mouth? Or a potty mouth? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking, you know, uh, we, we should all have one thing in common. And that one thing is to bring people closer to God. We all have what now? We should all have one thing in common. And that one thing is to bring people closer to God. We should all have one thing in common. That is to bring other people close to God. Some of us want to bring people close to God. And some probably, probably a few people here don't give a rip about somebody else. Right. You have one desire, that is, you will be close to God. But you don't care about anybody else. But if you really get close to God... People have a desire to bring other people closer. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing to have in your heart. Well, 
Let's close with a prayer with the benediction. I'm going to ask Ernie to pray for it. Then we get us to give us a prayer, right? Lord, we, we know that you are here, and that you're here, and you see all things, Father. Mm-hmm. And we pray for the Lord that what you have heard would bring you glory and honor. We know that you're the creator of heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water and all that is within you, oh God. <coughs> Touch each one here. You are your creation for your good pleasure, Father. We ask the Father to chasten us, Lord, but never leave us, Lord. Guide us and instruct us and give us power and knowledge and understanding that we are not walking alone, that we, that we are committed one to another, that we are a brother to keep the Lord. Touch the leaders in a special way, give them understanding and wisdom. Let us walk in a manner that will bring you glory this day, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua Messiah. Amen. 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 Praise God. Everybody have a good day. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Steve, I, I sure will. <laughs> Let him know that you guys all think about him. So, yeah, um, I just saw LA. LA. Oh my goodness, Ron, it's so good to see you. I've missed this a lot.